Welcome to Framework Fridays. Uh, if you're new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self-aware narcissist on this channel to provide awareness of narcissistic abuse and help coach people out of being stuck in a toxic relationship. I work with women who are stuck in toxic relationships trying to figure out how do they leave? How do they get clarity? How do they figure out how to actually get free from a toxic person, the trauma bond, the triggers, all the emotional abuse that's happening inside the relationship. Well, on, on Fridays, I'm gonna be doing a, just kind of like a mini series. And the mini series is gonna be going through different frameworks and different pieces that we actually teach inside of raw motivations. And one of those frameworks is called the core four. And the core four is one of the powerhouses to actually building back a person's confidence because when you're in a toxic relationship confidence is one of the first things to go you don't know who you are you don't actually know what's right what's wrong what's up what's down you're so confused in the relationship you have to start building back your confidence your certainty in yourself so we have to focus on doing that first and in a way of doing that we're trying to build this piece of repetition confidence is built by repetition the more you do something over and over and over, the more you start to gain confidence in that particular task or in what you're doing. Think of it for a moment with tying your shoelaces. You've tied your shoes thousands of times. So at this point, you're probably pretty confident in tying your shoe. You probably don't have to sit and think, okay, which loop goes around which, all these kind of things you don't have to think about. It's almost muscle memory at this point because you've tied your shoe for such a long period of time. Well, you have confidence in that area. The reason why you don't have confidence inside of some of your own growth and some of your own development is because you haven't had the repetition of doing it. Just like someone going to the gym for the first time, they don't have a lot of confidence knowing what they need to do, what workout plan, how to do it, what level of weights, all the different questions that are going to arise because they haven't been to a gym. They don't have the confidence versus someone who's been going for years. They know exactly what they're going to do. They have an idea of what needs to happen. They know how to work the machines, etc. So. What we're talking about here is confidence building has to come from a repetition. Now, repetition in society oftentimes feels very boring. People are like, but I want it to be new. I want it to be different, which is great. Change it up, but still have a repetition in your life. Why? Because when you have the repetition, it starts to breed a level of confidence that cannot be created and cannot be faked in any other way, except by you knowing that you have done this. Alex Ramosi mentions in one of his quotes of having this idea of having undeniable proof, being able to have undeniable evidence, then you stack all this evidence that shows you I am who I say who I am. I've done what I've said I've done. I've been able to accomplish this. I can actually move forward because of all these things that I've already done. It's the same aspect in building confidence is looking back and being able to say, well, wait a second, I have confidence in who I am because of how I've been showing up. That consistency piece, which is massive. Consistency, repetition, breeds confidence. Cannot stress that enough. And we talk about that in so many different levels of what I do inside of Raw Motivations and the clients that I coach. Because consistency is key in helping you actually move forward and achieve the goals that you want to achieve. So what are we talking about inside of Framework Fridays? Today, we're talking about the core four. And the core four, like I mentioned, is how to be able to build up your confidence. Core four is divided up into four areas, body, being, balance, and business. We're only gonna talk about one today because I wanna really hone in on what this is and what it actually looks like. The first section inside of the core four, and it's a framework, and the reason why we call it a framework, and the reason why it is a framework, is because there's no point in getting super strict, strict and scripted out of what you do and can't do. It's really important that we provide a container for you to be able to see if you do this, it's going to continue helping you in these ways. Now, how many of you know going to the gym clears up your mental energy, your mind load? You just like don't think about anything else. You're just doing reps and you're like, okay, this feels better. Because going to the gym and working out, those type of things are helpful inside of not just your body and your physical aspect, but they help you mentally as well. They can connect in a lot of different areas of your life when you engage with them in a consistent basis. Okay, so in the first section, we're talking about body. And body is broken up into two main areas that are practiced on practice on a daily basis. The first one is fitness, and the second one is fuel. Now, fitness has the broad container of did you sweat today or did you move today? And the reason why it's so broad is because it doesn't make sense for us to get everybody on the same workout plan. That's not the goal. The goal is that you do for you what you need to do in this moment to actually start progressing and pushing yourself to actually continue to rise up in your bodily strength and how you're actually showing up physically. This was a challenge to me a couple of years ago of what I needed to do and how I needed to show up. So I had to go and get some facts about what was currently going on. When I went and got my first traditional facts in the beginning of 2023, 
I realized where I was at, 160, 70 pounds and about 29, almost 30% body fat. Realizing that that was the dad bod that I did not want. So therefore, I started down this pursuit of actually growing and developing who I was and how I was showing up. Started working on my meal plan, started working on how I was working out, started working on all of these different pieces and nuances that need to happen in order for me to transition to where I am currently as of yesterday when I got my DEXA scan. And that's actually at 176 pounds at 18% body fat. So for me, I can see progression because I'm actually tracking numbers. And that progression only came over a period of time of consistency, having this repetition. But this repetition was all based on the framework of fitness. Did you actually move? Did you actually sweat today? Consider when you're coming out of a toxic relationship, this is one of the first things that you can do that is 100% in your power and in your capability to do. You can go for a walk for five minutes. You can get out of bed and do a couple sit-ups or push-ups. You can do something that might be tiny and you might think, well, what's the point because it's so small? What's the point is if you do that small thing every single day, you will start to have consistency in your life and you'll have a repetition that brings confidence. All right, hopefully you're tracking inside of this. We're trying to be able to build frameworks to be able to have a container for you to be able to think about your fitness, for you to be able to think about how you're actually treating your body on a day-to-day -day basis. So the first aspect is fitness, and that is the idea of did you move or did you sweat? There's not a specific workout plan. There's not a specific aspect you have to do. We're just talking about, hey, we want you to exercise. We want you to actually start to build energy inside of you because you're actually going out and doing something that is activating you. So many times people get stuck inside of their houses or stuck inside of their cubicle or stuck inside of just life, and they're not really getting activated physically. Why? Because they're not putting any effort into themselves. So consider part of the challenge for you today is how are you putting effort into yourself from a physical standpoint? That could be going for a walk, doing push-ups, going to the gym, going biking, going swimming, whatever it might be. It's something that's going to help you move to be able to help you become more confident inside of you. This will increase your body image, like how you actually think and view yourself. This will increase like your muscle mass, your toning. Like it'll increase how you actually think about yourself and how you look at yourself. It'll increase how you show up because you'll show up with different energy, different power when you walk into a room when you are fit versus if you are fat. So inside of all of this, I want you to consider what are you actually doing on a day-to-day -day basis to move? Don't make it complicated. Don't make it huge. Have it be small. The second aspect inside of body is this area of fuel. And when we're talking about fuel, we're talking about the food that you consume. And specifically, we're talking about making sure that you're putting the right nutrients and supplements into your body. Simply put, when we're talking about fuel inside of the core four, we're talking about did you have your daily greens? Now, this could be a green smoothie. This could be uh, this could be something that you just mix up. This could be adding kale to some of yourself. This could be adding extra greens into your diet. Whatever it might be is we're trying to be able to provide different aspects to help you increase your energy, but also increase aspects that you don't typically focus on or that you might not typically get. This aspect is we're trying to hone in your food. Like what you're actually intaking, not because we're trying to go and be like, let's just control everything. We want you to be able to learn how to insert positivity into your diet, how to start inserting positive things. So for instance, we've been working on just being healthy, right? And getting healthier and healthier in what we're consuming and what we're eating. I, on one hand, love cereal. Cereal for me growing up was just like my jam. And going into high school and college, it was excessively my jam. Like I would have like a cereal, like bowl of cereal, maybe like two, three times a day. Why? Because it's amazing and I loved it. Now, cereal years ago is a lot different than cereal now. How, whatever you want to think, wherever you sit on that, you can't argue that ingredients have changed over the years and the stuff that is in them is not as healthy as what it used to be. And I'm not going to go down that crunchy road, but we're just going to talk about it just for a second. So for me, cereal is something that is a weakness, right? It's a downfall of like, if I eat all this cereal with all this sugary goodness, it's not going to help me actually have the body that I want. Now, being able to find a healthy cereal that actually helps me move towards my goal. Well, that's pretty amazing. So we discovered Magic Spoon and Magic Spoon is pretty incredible simply because it's not only fair, it's not only healthy cereal, but it also has protein in it. So I can actually get some protein in and have cereal and it tastes good and put it with some protein milk and it's pretty amazing. All of that to be able to say, all I did was I inserted something that was positive versus taking something out. I'm just swapping stuff. I'm just making sure that I'm putting stuff into my diet that's actually helping me show up better. 
It's helping me show up more engaged, more in tune, more in tune with my body, more in alignment with who I'm actually becoming and how I'm actually growing and developing my body on a day-to-day basis. So inside of the piece of fuel, what we track inside of actually keeping track of the fitness and the fuel, so we track that you have your daily greens. We're not saying get on a certain diet. This diet's not better than another. We're not focusing on that because we want you to start inserting the good, inserting the positive. We're not just trying to tell you to eliminate stuff. We want you to start inserting the positive. And as you start inserting the positive, the other stuff will start to eliminate because you start to see a shift in your energy and your vitality and how you're actually showing up on a day-to-day basis. So this area of body is very important. And a lot of times people discount it and they think, well, I'll get my body in check once I get my mind in check. I'll figure it out once I have the motivation to do it. And the fact of the matter is you won't simply because you're not going to sit around the couch until you magically have an epiphany and you have motivation. Instead, getting off the couch and actually going someplace is going to be more motivation than you just sitting there waiting for the epiphany to happen. Because getting off the couch requires movement. Movement is required to start a momentum to be able to start motivation. So when you're thinking, I don't want to go to the gym or I don't want to go for a workout, that's the piece where we need to get you to at least get up. We need you to at least go get your shoes on. We need at least get the work bag ready for tomorrow. Like whatever it might be, we need to start creating some movement towards this and some preparation so that you can actually achieve these goals. Right now, you might be thinking, I'm just trying to figure out how to get out of bed. Perfect. Let's work on that one step at a time because I'm going to meet you with wherever you are. The whole goal inside of this is that we create action one step at a time to help you move forward to who you're actually called to be. If you want to know more about how I work with people, you can go to rawmotivations.com. We'd love to be able to talk to you today to be able to help you move forward in your healing and in your growth process.